Hey everybody, welcome back to The Move, presented to you by Patron Tequila. Sitting alongside my longtime, long, long time co-host, J.B. Hager, and George Hinkapi. The yin to my yang. The ham to my egg. The shake to my bake. The manners to my crankiness. I can't help but wonder if you were this cranky last year, or it's just the... You know, having George next to you just yeah. sort of sheds a light on it. Well, I told you yesterday, it doesn't help that he's right all the time, and, it, and it, then it doesn't help later in the day to get all these emails from people like, you know, he really balances out your your curmudgeonness. <laughs> I mean, what is this? <clears throat> a little bit of business before we... I had a funny email about uh, the ads. You know, you always worry that people are going to send you these... Uh, I'll look it up, but uh, send you these emails like, why are you reading all these ads, man? But I got a funny one from this lady yesterday. Uh, anyways, today's show is sponsored by Helix, who's on a mission to empower every person to improve their life through DNA. DNA discovery isn't just about ancestry and dietary restrictions. It's about learning what makes you, you. Or, if you're George Incappy, you might find out why people like you so much. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever tried that, George? Have you ever tested? I is have. There like a, I have. There must be a test, like a nice guy, likable, popular, <laughs> handsome I haven't test. gotten that far. I need PJ or Robin to you know, get me to that section of the whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, the information they send you. Mm -hmm. But seriously, if you're interested in learning more about your foodie self, your fitness self, your coffee-obsessed self, try out their DNA Passport product for just 49 bucks. It looks at over 40 different traits, including ancestry, wellness, and diet. And good looks like George Hincapie, head on over to helix.com slash the move during the tour and get 25% off with the code MOVE25. U.S. listeners only. Exciting day. We're talking about stage 14 from uh, St. Paul Trois Chateau, home of my, my favorite hotel in France, uh, run by this sweet old French dude, uh, Claude. Uh, called Le Splan and uh, finishing in Monda, the, which we talked a lot about. A really, really difficult climb, and and uh, we saw two races today. Both of you guys yesterday, when you saw that it was that town, you both perked up about that hotel. Yeah, and George yep. is in the business, the hotel business. So, and obviously, you have stayed in a countless number of yeah, French hotels. All about what people. is it about that place? It was just a family-run hotel, um, and they were very always super friendly to us. Always requested our presence during the tour. Um, when we saw we had that hotel at a rest day, you know, we, it was a big bonus for us. Um, that's where Lance was introduced to tapenade, which he still to this day, I think, oh, I'm obsessed loves. With what is that? Tapenade is like a, an olive puree. And you, they give you these little crusty pieces of bread and you just spread it on. Oh, it's so good. Real salty. And, Magical. Ooh. So good. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Hey, by the way, too, if, if on the show I sound like I've all of a sudden started smoking like three packs a day, I haven't. Um, and, and we talked about this in the preview show and I think in a couple other shows, these fires continue to rage just down Valley. And with the wind in the last few days, we've been getting this wind. George and I, uh, been riding it. it, it it's insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't just, it's probably not healthy to go ride in that, but I, I can't just sit at home. Um, but it's, it's super intense, this, uh, the smoke. And so if I'm hacking around and sounding like a smoker, that's cause. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> Look, George was right. It's like every day. I mean, the break would go away, stay away. 28 riders in the breakaway ended up getting 20 minutes on the main field. We saw an exciting finale. I was very, I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. And I love your shirt, JB. That's the first time that has been rocked. The Patron one. Who is your Patron? That's awesome. And it's got the move on the back. That is cool. Yeah. We need to get some more of those. Uh, my, I'm going to, I'm going to name my Patron Jasper Steuben. Mm -hmm. This kid, you know, he, although he didn't win, he was a few minutes short. He just needed a final climb to be just a little bit shorter. He really had no choice. Looking around that group with Philippe Gilbert and, and uh, Julian Alaphilippe and, and the kid who won, Omar Freyla, he had to go, and he had to go as hard as he could, get a big enough gap. Everybody, including everybody on TV and including myself, just thought he had it. George, of course, was right. said he's going to get caught. Thank you. Um, <laughs> which is, but this Omar Freyla, he's legit. We 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 looked him up. He's won you know won a stage in the Giro. He won the mountain classification in the Tour of Spain. He won this just this year alone. Won a stage in Tour of Romandie, uh, Tour of the Basque Country. These are those are hard races, FYI. Mm -hmm. um, impressive move by him. 
Yeah, the guys were surprised by his move. Um, I can't obviously I can't pick the same patron as Lance, so I'm gonna have to go with my good buddy Philippe Gilbert, who uh, you know mm. ex world champion, winner of many World Cup, uh, some of the biggest one day races in the world, but really put it on the line. As we know, this is a team sport. A lot of people may not know how important your teammates are, but today he he put it all on the line for Ali Philippe. I spoke to him after the stage. He was very frustrated. He said nobody would help. Everybody was scared of Ali Philippe for that day and. He just said, screw it. I'm going to do it on my own. So he, he <laughs> is the main reason Jesper Stoyven even got caught. Yeah, that's a Patron move. I mean, to just say, all right, I'll just I'll sit on the front and ride. Watch exactly. this. Yep. I mean, that, uh, but, that, what, but more importantly, not more importantly, but the fact that Philippe Gilbert is watching the show, and for anybody that saw either yesterday or saw our clip on Instagram, <laughs> um, Philippe Gilbert sent a note to George and said, that's amazing. You guys got Lance to cry. What do you say? Something? I mean, he yeah. thought I was crying. I mean, I, I saw a couple of tears. I don't know. It was, gonna, he might fake it right now. George but. wants me to get, go with it. <laughs> People, it, it'll be endearing. <laughs> I mean, oh no! Here we go. That next question, JB. It was. It was rant. What, we got him a little happy this morning. He's happier. <laughs> although I thought he started off the morning very cranky, watching TV, some changing channels. I couldn't even focus. But I think when they go to commercial on NBC, now. I go to the Open. I mean, it's, we're on the third day of the Open uh, in, in over in England, and, and you know, Tiger made a run today. Uh, it was six under at one point, gave one back. But uh, I mean, honestly, it was more exciting than 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 watching two groups until you get to the finish. We have yeah. to watch the finish. There's nothing to see. But you guys called it yesterday that we were going to get to see <coughs> two races, and that's exactly what happened. You know, you that was that was cool. Right. That's, that's a lot of yeah. No, and that's true. Um, and then it's a test. Today's a testament to the the you just mentioned a couple of riders that you didn't know anything about, and you guys were looking them up. It's a testament to winning a stage or going attempting to win a stage, and what that does for TV time exposure. And then you guys are looking them up, going, "Wow, this guy's legit!" Absolutely. Yeah. And I, mean, I think and, a lot of fans are doing that too. And not to mention, I mean, the group was huge today. Twenty nine guys. Um, we didn't see how the break was formed, unfortunately. Which, in my opinion, is some of the hardest racing out there. It's the first hour of the Tour de France stages on days like today, where you're virtually assured a breakaway is going to make it to the finish line. That is some real bike racing. I got a call from Bob Roll this morning, and he he said he the first 20k they were going like 65k an hour to make the breakaway, Ooh. and it was no luck involved in making that breakaway. Everybody in that breakaway was uh, super strong and uh, had the intention to go. Hey, um, and I talk about this kid every day, Michael Kwiatkowski. Miko yeah. Kwiatkowski. But you're saying he, wrong, by the way. I know I'm saying wrong, but we say most people's <laughs> names wrong. But um, again, just seeing this guy on the front, he's just such a. If if it, if the tour ended today and I had to name a patron of the tour, it's him. I mean, he's just he's he's selfless. He's tough. He's strong. Uh, he's a professional. But the reason, also part two, I bring this up is we are saying his name very wrong, not just wrong, but like really wrong. So we, <laughs> like we've had every day, fans send us. I love this. Send us their um, <laughs> the cor correct again. pronunciation. And in the days to come, my good friend Alana Zizi, who lives here in Aspen, has gone uh, stage by stage and taught us how to say these the start town and the finish town. I love that. And um, so we'll have those coming up starting tomorrow. But. Uh, but this particular Polish fan corrected us. His uh, yeah, a guy wrote to us and said, "My girlfriend is Polish," and so she read. We've been saying we've all been saying like Michael Kriakowski, like we're not even close. Here, here is the definitive answer from his Polish girlfriend. Michał Kwiatkowski. <laughs> we're not even close. Go again. I don't even know if I can say. Go, that. go ahead. Michał Kwiatkowski. By the way, is she two? I mean, how old is this kid? I don't, I, it's no video. It was you just can't be a, have a, you can't be a girlfriend if you're two or even seven. Michał Kwiatkowski. Michał Kwiatkowski. One more time. Michał Kwiatkowski. That's amazing. Kwiatkowski. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Mm. I love that. Wow. Keep sending those. Hey, and I should have said this at the top of the show, as we announced yesterday, we are moving in with somebody. We sit here in this trailer every day and do this. Um, but on the final day, we are taking the show on the road, and we want to come to your living room, your garage, your barn, your whatever. Um, actually, whatever, your workplace, it doesn't matter. Uh, send us. All we're asking is you go on, sign up for the newsletter at wedo.team. Write us a 250-word paragraph, and just tell us why. Why should we move in with you? So we'll be I, there, watch the stage. George is 50 I encourage, 50. I encourage anybody in Jackson Hole to do your best. George has, a, has to be in Jackson Hole, so he <laughs> wants everybody there to write really compelling stories. It would be super suspicious if we, we pick somebody there. But um, 
yeah so we're taking it there and and um you know a few little rules here and there must be mm-hmm. 21 etc you can see it all on we do dot team but i'm excited I'm excited to go somewhere else. Yeah, we're taking a entries. In here. Yeah, uh, up until Tuesday midnight, and then we'll. Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? It's up until Tuesday, and then we Wednesday will give us a chance to go That's through them right. all. We'll announce the winner on Thursday. Awesome. Uh, we do dot team slash contest. Can I? Can I, and I? Listen, this is the part of the show where I get. I'm. I, I'm fixing to get real cranky. Okay. Because uh, I what happens in the mornings is I get up before as I'm sort of watching the stage early on and it's it, if it's uneventful I just scour the internet and read all these news stories. I see this headline that that Nibali's team and I'm I'm a big fan of Nibali. He was my pick to win the tour. Uh, however, his team Bahrain Meridia is considering <clears throat> legal action against the Tour de France because the, for for and I can read it to you because for they for not protecting the riders. Now. <laughs> no, the answer n- that is no. That's that is fucking stupid. <laughs> We're not. George, come. On. Hey, I I agree. It's not. Uh, I think it's stupid. But I actually don't mind seeing teams sticking up to the ASO. I mean, they have so much power in our sport. Nobody says anything against them. Think about how much different our sport could be if there was a lot more cooperation between the teams and the ASO and TV revenue and all that. That's a whole different conversation, but. <laughs> Hey, somebody's standing up to them. I'm, I'm okay with it. Well, I, I think that, you can speak freely about this. We talked about it yesterday. You had almost an identical incident happen to you with um, a spectators grabbing your handlebars and pulling you down. I, I mean, didn't grab says, them. I mean, that was my fault. And, it, and it's um, similar in the sense that I caught a musette bag and Vincenzo Nibali caught a camera strap. Mm-hmm. Um, but their team director... Uh, this guy, uh, Brett Copeland, says ASO has insurance for this kind of thing. And we've, we've suffered clear and important damage as a team. Vincenzo is our team leader, and he's the patrimony of our team and the, and the sport as a whole. As Prudhomme and Laparcian have said, it's true that there were barriers where the incident happened, but there seems to be clear negligence. The fans invaded the road, and the gendarmerie didn't do what they should have. They also didn't do anything about people lighting flares. We know it's not easy to control 600,000 fans. Um, as, as they're so powerful and well-organized, some things have to be managed firmly. This just goes, n- n- no, this is, this is, I think this is a, it, it, look, it's terribly unfortunate what happened to Nibley. Is it worthy of a lawsuit? Absolutely not. Well, but, is it a, do you suspect it's a money grab? They go, oh, it's insured. Well, they say, yeah, they have insurance. I mean, you, you, when you lead with, they have insurance for stuff like this, that. It sounds like a money grab. But. But the money grabs over time, like that, could start to change things. You see it in, in other. Yeah, sports. that would open, that would open a whole Pandora's box of. Uh, I get it issues. with the flares. We talked about it yesterday. The, the, these flares, a really, um, you know, hurt the riders' uh, uh, ability to see the road, obviously. And then you can imagine what it's like to breathe that stuff. So let's just not have the flares. But the people are going to be on the roads. If you, if you want people on the side of the, if you want people on Alpe d'Huez or Montfond too, you better keep those barriers away. Yeah, and I know we got a, a, a fan who's been to Alpe d'Huez and some of the other big climbs. They wrote into us and they said, "You can put barriers on the whole climb, and the fans are just going to peel them down no, or climb over." No, they won't do that. They will. They, not, they have. I mean, they, they have Jean Marie, the police, the French police. Yeah. Basically, every five or ten meters. So. Uh, technically, they shouldn't be able to do that. And you know yeah. what's even tougher than the gendarmerie is the CRS. When the CRS rolls up, which is like the French equivalent of SWAT, you sit your ass down. Really? Like it's oh man, it's they don't play. I'm telling you. Um, well, you know, while you're talking about the fans and how it comes into play with the event, I know you wanted to talk about the podium ceremony. Can, we, can with- I? Let me just. I do want to. I do want to rant on that for just a second because I'm very passionate about it, but. Uh, let me first talk about high-brew coffee. If you cannot tell, I'm already amped up and hyped up enough today, but our good friends at Cold Brew, uh, or High Brew, they cold brew for those who do, which is amazing, and I'm still going to find this email that this lady sent me yesterday about... Oh, I uh, have it. Do you have it about her husband's buying... <laughs> we'll, read it, we'll, we'll read it in a second, but uh, six different flavors, all natural energy, two cups of coffee per can, all cold brewed, so 67% less uh, acidity. Um, you can get it at Amazon. Or, uh, there's, a, there's a coupon code there, 20 the move, 20, all caps, by the way, 20 the move for 20% off. 
on Amazon. High brew coffee, cold brew for those who do. That email you were referencing was from Kendra Miller, who said, Hey, Lance, longtime listener of Stages and now The Move. Quick question. Do you think you could stop advertising so many great brands? My husband has ordered products from <laughs> all of them. <laughs> it's getting expensive around the Miller house. Well, the women in the family are supposed to make all the purchasing decisions. I know they Kendra. have all they have all the power. Is that what you mean? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. So listen, you tease okay. this here, JB, and and I want and I do want George. George, do not. I want you to be honest about this and don't try to play nice to all the pretty girls and all the shit you do every day. <laughs> <clears throat> I want. Don't look at anything. Else. Listen, right, to me. I, want, I want I'm you listening. to be. I want you to be uh, honest <sighs> and, and fully transparent about this. <laughs> I read another article that said Jarrett Thomas, again, we know what happened with Chris Room for the past year leading into this tour, ASO trying to kick him out of the tour, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, his teammate has the jersey, Jarrett Thomas, who's, who's not, was not part of that story other than the fact that he's on Team Sky. He, and again, this is what I read, was booed off the podium yesterday. Now, and you can hear the boos when you watch the race. You have to assume most of those boos are directed towards Chris Froome, but by by association, Jaron Thomas is, is also being booed off the stage. You know what? A, that's stupid. But what do we expect? I mean, what what do we look what look what this sport has done as a whole to itself over the last ten years, all the way up until the week before the tour when Christian Prudholm said Chris Froome's not welcome, said all these really, really toxic, damaging things to Chris Froome. And now he tries to get, you know, in front of the camera and the mic and say, hey, guys, calm down. Mm -hmm. Do you honestly think they're going to calm down after all the shit they've been told for 10 years? Plus? Yeah, and especially it, since August. And here's yeah. my point. Nobody's going to listen to Christian Prudhomme. Nobody. However, why don't we get, if we're in France, who will they listen to? Well, guess who's commentating on Eurosport? Richard Virenk. Mm -hmm. Guess who's commentating on French TV? Laurent Jalabert. Let's have, they were part of the, of the culture and the problem and the process here. Let's have them say something. Say, hey guys, calm down. Show a little respect. Do a small. Show a little respect. I mean, these guys, you know, everybody's working hard out there. Uh, Garen Thomas won two stages, of the, two of his biggest races of his life. Um, there's no excuse for that. There's no, there's no place for that in cycling. And also, not only call these guys out to you know try to calm the fans down. Let's call out some of the English fans and the American fans to show that guy some support. I mean, he's in the yellow jersey of the Tour de France, Incredible and a pretty likable guy, right? Totally, There's great no, guy. Yeah, but 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 again, you you can't you can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. right? Christian Prudhomme cannot have it both ways. Any chance he gets, and I'll and I'm, maybe I'm getting over my skis here a little bit. Any chance he gets to talk about me, it is as negative as you as it can possibly be. And so you can't then, I mean, it, it just, it feeds you can't. this roadside behavior, this yeah. roadside mentality, this roadside aggression. And I'm not asking anybody to all of a sudden stand up and start saying nice things about me, but um, you, you just can't have it both ways. You can't point the finger at, the, at Froome and that team for, yeah. for 11 months and then go, hey, it stop. Yeah, please. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. No, they're not going to do that, as we saw today. I mean... Yep. Any I, more? Saw, I saw another headline, or not headline, maybe it was part of this litigation story with Bahrain. They, according to this article, they, are, they had told their riders before the race to not ride near Chris Froome because it was dangerous. From the fans. Yeah. What? I don't even remember hearing that when you were riding the last couple of years, and you, know, there, you did have a lot of haters out there. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember it being dangerous. Although I do remember Johan... At the some of those really tight uphill short finishes that he wanted a couple guys in front of you. I'm surprised. I will say on the, that final climb to Monda. I mean, I'm surprised that Chris Froome stays on the outside of that group. I mean, I, yeah. if it were me, when, when you could hear it and you could see it, the aggression. Man, I'm. You it doesn't have to be teammates, but right, I'm right. in the middle. So if you want to get to me, you're going to have to go over Dumoulin or Quintana <laughs> or right. some or somebody else like. That's a great point. I, Why, mean, I mean, I'm not rubbing elbows with these guys. I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be right here in my little cocoon. Yeah. Especially after getting 
punched or slapped whatever happened yesterday on Opti Wes. One, one other acknowledgement, George Hincapie was wrong about one thing today because he expected Roman Bardet to accelerate and, and, and attack and get away. I did. And he lost 14 seconds to his, uh, to his GC rivals. And I did not expect uh, Demolon to, you know, sort of uh, play poker and sit off the back, pretend he was getting dropped, and then attack right after that. So that's a clear indication that he's on the up, and I think it's going to make for some exciting racing for the last week of the Tour de France. Just keep that in mind, folks. When you're watching, I mean, the last week of this tour is going to be very, very difficult with the combo. So, of- so speaking of that last week of the tour, can I, I want to ask that question mm-hmm. or propose that question from Cameron Worth, who's uh, training for the Ironman in Kona. Uh, Lance and I know him quite well. He's actually great friends with G, Garen Thomas. So uh, his question, um, well, he thinks G can win the tour. I agree. If he avoids a bad day. Because right now, the top three guys, let's just, I mean, for argument's sake, they're pretty close and level. But Garen has had, historically had a bad day in a lot of these Grand Tours, while the other guys have not. So mm-hmm. Lance, the question I guess would be a good one for you. I mean, what? how do these guys you know keep that bad day from happening so the, the 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 list of people that could have won the tour is a mile long mm-hmm. except for the one bad day i mean the the, the and the, it's one bad day it's one bad day mm-hmm. one, bad, or one day. bad climb mm-hmm. it's and then the next day they're good again i mean it, it's they're they're you can go down the list of the last 105 years there was always there's there's hundreds of these guys and we can go couldn't down escape the one bad day you mm-hmm. had a bad day and uh, which was one of in my opinion one of two two really bad days which were my impressive mo- most that i was most impressed with your riding was uh juplan when pantani attacked from the gun we chased all day long lance is yelling at us going i'm gonna effing fucking kill this I guy hate this you guy. guys keep him close <laughs> the this fuck race is this over guy think he 150 is? kilometers i mean he's scream like screaming at us top of his life <laughs> forgot to eat forgot to drink he gets to the bottom of the juplon and he bonks man with a hammer i mean boom, 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 boom. boom no legs out of glycogen but i mean some and, and by the way pantani got to the bottom of juplon about a minute ahead of us and pulled out of the tour de france Basically Ooh, did it just to screw with Lance. Mm. Stop the Tour de France on that day. Not only am I the biggest out dick that ever walked the face here, <laughs> I'm, I'm also the biggest <laughs> idiot. But the point That's is, stupid. incredibly bad day for Lance, and he only—I think he's still—he still held on to the yellow jersey. He lost time, two and a half minutes or something. Got dropped by everybody, but he, he had some friends along the on the road that would get, saw that he was dropped, gave him a little help. I mean, who's the Spanish guy that helped you over the top? Was, um, have you not listened to the first week of the tour? We talked all about it. Roberto Conti. Okay. I, for, of course, I forgot his first name. When but I, that was one of his bad days. And then the time trial in 2003 yeah. where he lost and you know, super dehydrated. Well, I, look, I'm with Cam Worf. I, I do think, and I wish him luck learning how to swim and run if you want to win in Kona. Yep. Um, uh, I agree with him. I, I do think Garen Thomas can win. Uh, he ha- Like all these people we just talked about, you have to avoid the bad day. And even if you have a bad day, um, then you have to manage that bad day, right? I mean... We're talking about having a bad day, losing twenty minutes. Yeah. I mean, if you can manage it, and 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 play possum in a way, th- helps manage it. Um, I, I believe I believe that he can. I believe he can win. And and Chris, I don't think Chris Froome. I'm. Just, I keep saying this. Of course, he never looks good. He no. looks terrible. And then he on goes the on the attack. Can't and then count he goes on the attacks. <laughs> that last week is where you know all the difference is going to be made. Look at this. This is this is a photo. I found this. I think it was on Cycling Tips. This is a photo of Garrett Thomas at 22 years old. You're not going to believe this, JV, because I could almost hold it up beside you. I mean, that, that's 20 pounds. That has wow, to be. Right that has to be 20 pounds. Wow. Yeah, he's a big boy. And over the years, he's just, just gotten leaner down. and leaner, and um, you know, he's really developed into. Well, that isn't that part of it. Is you're like, okay, if I'm gonna be a grand tour guy, I have to, I have to lean out. Yeah, they just have to. Oh, for sure, for sure. Well, that and um, basically just doing grand tours back to back. Uh, you just it's inevitable. You, it's inevitable. Right. You just start leaning out. You get rid of all that baby fat. Um, but clearly, he's made a huge effort and to lose that extra. As weight. has Chris Froome. Did you mm-hmm. have another question that someone sent you? Yeah. So this is from uh, a question from. Uh, mine and most likely Lance's most favorite redneck, Brody Glenn. <laughs> Thank you for shooting the question, Brody. But he said, when we were in the Tour de France, um, did we always listen to what our director told us to do? Were there times Good where question. we said, would, would you tell him to pound sand and do your own thing? If your call was an audible, how hard was it to get your teammates to do what you wanted to do versus listening to the director? 
How pissed would the director get if you didn't listen to him? Lance, you want to answer that one? <coughs> Sorry. Um, I can't think of an instance or an episode where I did not uh, respect and honor what Johan Bernil wanted to do. Um, you see it happen a lot. And we, folks, for you all at home watching the race, you'll see it happen. If you're in a group and a rider doesn't want to listen to his director, he doesn't just ignore him or do something different. He just takes the radio out of his ear. Mm -hmm. When that radio is dangling on the helmet strap, that's a rider that says, you know what? I ain't listening to this motherfucker. I don't, and I can say, oh, my radio fell out. Oh, I, I forgot to put it back in. Yeah. He's got cover. But that happens all the time. Yeah, it happens all the time. Definitely. Any more input, ideas, thoughts on the Garrett Thomas Froome battle, if you they're want to call saying, it that? They're saying all the right things. Yeah. I mean, they were trading pulls today at the end uh, with Tom Dumoulin. Um, boy, it's, it's, uh, and I, and I do believe that they actually are friendly and, and like each other. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a, the same situation as Bradley Wiggins and Chris Froome. This is, this is different. And, um, they're like, again, saying all the right things, acting the right way. Yeah. They're getting along, but mm -hmm. I mean, they both really want to win. So we'll see how that <clears throat> continues. By the way, who sent you the Smurf? It was on Twitter. I got to find the, <laughs> yeah, we got, find we, that. we, we that get all great. kinds By of the, funny whoever stuff. Whoever sent the. The Smurf thing was hilarious. Let me see if I can find it. It was too funny. Um, While you're looking for that, do, we'll take last, 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 last yeah. bit of business. We talk about it every day. Uh, I love this company. And is it, oh, here it is here. PowerDot. Uh, check it out at PowerDot.com slash the move. They've given away one unit per day. Uh, Got to go sign up there on PowerDot.com slash the move. And if you want to buy one, 25% off to all our listeners with that same uh, URL. Uh, this is, this is, uh, again, I love the company so much. I invested in it. This is a, a highly mobile, incredibly mobile, unbelievably mobile East M unit that you can take anywhere. And it's like a, it's like a disc man. I noticed both you and George are always tow, towing a backpack with it, with <coughs> your essentials in it. And that's one of them. That's one of them. That's yep. one of my essentials. I yeah. got it in there also. Yeah. So the, the person who sent it was, uh. Kiyo Kasai, um, he said, en las belas, en las montañas de Bella, Utah. So, uh, he sent it. That was great. I don't Speaking know if he, I don't know if, in Utah. I don't know if he, if he put it together, but he sent it to us. So, great job. Do we have it? One. Can you show it? I can show it. Where do I show it? Right How do we? <laughs> so, what is the, the JB Smurf? Uh, Grandpa Smurf. Grandpa Smurf. Okay. Grandpa Smurf. And then you are the brainy smurf because i've been smurf. right every every and uh, you're a cranky smurf i'm cranky smurf it's perfect and somebody somebody said well, that should be a t-shirt <laughs> yes you should make t-shirts i'm like yes right that would that's be a, a t-shirt that's wear. a fucking great idea i escape the hundred million dollar lawsuit from the postal service and then get sued by the smurfs <laughs> who said you could make a smurf t-shirt armstrong uh, i'm going to tee up some questions and comments but first tell us uh, your thoughts on tomorrow's stage tough the tough tough day this part of france is never flat and the roads are never smooth and don't discount what road surface means uh to these guys i mean a a, 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 a full day of chip seal french chip seal it just the, it the just efficiency goes way down yeah. and so they're the you know you're really and truly pedaling and tomorrow unlike today actually has some longer climbs i mean we have we have it you know, starts out right away with a cat three then a cat two and then not that far from the finish we have a category one and let's not forget i'm so they're finishing in Carcassonne, which, as we all know, is that where the Mistral's are. So coming Ooh. off that descent, there could be—I got to take these things off. I'm sorry. Coming off that descent, there could be some. Even if even if there isn't fireworks on that Category One climb, there is always in that area of France potential for huge crosswind battles. And uh, so there, everybody knows that there could be some major wins at the end of the race tomorrow, which will be, make it very exciting and very stressful for the riders. That's you looking up point. the weather? I am looking up the weather, George, and, and you. I mean, I, I feel like the looks of this profile, it's another day for a break. Absolutely. 100% breakaway tomorrow. 80 and sunny in Carcassonne. But the, and it doesn't say anything about Mistral's. I mean, that, that, for those that have ever been over there, I mean, there's a light winds for, uh, for right now, but they, I mean, they'll blow 50 miles an hour. Yep. They'll, they'll blow you off the bike. Yep. We saw today there were like four or five echelons for a while with an hmm. incredible crosswind that didn't last long. That but. in combo, again, with, with roads that are never flat and chip seal surfaces, boy. And again, it, it, this is all just part of the story, right? So this yep. all one plus one plus one, it just equals a hundred 
getting further south. It's going to get warmer. Warm. You get into the Pyrenees. Then, bam, they hit them with a, a short explosive stage. Folks, sit down, get you some popcorn, because week three is going to be yep. super exciting. I, I'm excited. And by the way, one thing I want to say about Tom Dumoulin, for those fans or observers, don't get fooled. And I was almost fooled by him today because he's coming off a little bit on the final climb in Namanda, and I'm like, uh-oh. But, and I talked about it yesterday, this kid is a diesel, he, and he's smart. So he knows what his diesel can and can't do. He just sits there in his zone. Even if he loses to, you know, five meters, he just, he just manages his effort, manages his pace, and he, he's been, he always comes back. And so we may see that in the Pyrenees. Um, but I, uh, don't be fooled by it. He's, he's, you know, he's got his, he's got his gauge right there. He knows what's up. He's clearly recovered from the Giro on his way up. I feel like he's on his way up. And like we said, the the last week is going to be fireworks. And let me tell you something. If, if this race comes down to the time trial, because remember what I said in, in Santa Fe with our friends at outside and, uh, and the Violet Crown theater, I said, you asked me about the time trial. I said, this thing's going to be long decided before that. If it comes down to the time trial, I quit. I quit. <laughs> no I more commentary. I won't, for the you. move will die. <laughs> George can have it. I'll turn it over to George because I really believe it. But I mean, you can almost how about a three way, you know, not a three way. That sounded funny. Um, but Thomas Froome and, and Dumoulin, all guys that can time trial their ass off, that would be, and That'd I would be, be dead wrong. No. It's all right. Uh, here's an interesting idea from a listener, Neil. What do you, and I don't even—I doubt this is possible, but it's an interesting idea. What do you think about all the riders on the World Tour teams being assigned a number? Love that idea. It allows fans to get behind a rider, buy a jersey hat with that rider's number. Every sport does this. Forty-four to Lewis Hamilton, forty-eight Jimmy Johnson. It's a great idea. Uh, it's an amazing idea. Yeah. You know what's an even better idea? Is let the athletes have part of the proceeds of the sale. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and and and. And I've noticed it, this has always been the case. The fact that we still tape our, our stick on these numbers, in case you're wondering, they don't pin these numbers on in the tour. They stick them on. And, and half the guys, they don't stay on. No. The other half, they get all wrinkled up. Um, yeah, just start the year with a number. That way you don't, you don't have to mess with the stickers and the pins. And, I mean, but you know what? Here's, that just makes way too much sense. One of the one year, uh, front said is you actually printed on the numbers on the back of their jersey and got tr- and, and got in trouble and got denied. Got fined for it. Got f- fined. They had to put the stick on numbers, although it looked exactly the same. What? But that's one of those crazy rules which you ASL? referred to uh, that we couldn't think of the other day. But that was just nuts. I mean, the numbers looked exactly the same, but they were printed on. What's wow. that song in the name of money? Money. What's that song? You know that song? Don't know that song. Okay, I'll I'll think about it. <laughs> I just made it up, but. <laughs> Don't forget, ASO and every other race, that number doesn't just say your name at the bottom of it. They sell that. So it would, you'd have to have a lot of jerseys, or you'd have to just say to the organizers, you're not selling any race numbers because, you know, we're going to have one jersey and one number all year long. And, and it might have your name on it, but if it's Konica Minolta or Coca Cola, whoever's at the bottom, they're selling that. And they'd have to change around the. The system where the rider who won the year before is not number one, because that might be one of the complications. Oh, right, um, right. But that's certainly a there's, great idea. There's ways around it, but yeah. it, it's a great question and, a, and an even better idea. And it, it falls into how you guys have been talking about. How do you market riders and mm-hmm. build? Yep, agreed. You know, great star idea. power for them. Yep, no uh, helmets. <laughs> here's one from Tomas in Slovenia. It's Rogers. funny. Uh, you guys are you guys are pretty good for amateur cyclists who never won the TDF, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> Huge fan of Lance. Uh, how about the rider who is in fourth in GC? You haven't mentioned him in the podcast until recently. Primoz Roglic. He's a newbie, but uh, had until now a very strong per- performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in- including today, if we, if, no. if we want to talk yeah. about today, I mean, he was incredibly strong. And, you know, Tom Dumoulin, Garen Thomas, and Chris Froome finished together, but they finished behind Primoz Roglic. I mean, he was, he yeah, was total very badass. Watch. I mean, he's, he, and he's coming up, yep. and that team is strong. Super strong. By the way, this uh, listener, Tomas, sent uh, a clip. A clip. That's just oh evil. my God. And that's just one of the most wow. horrific things you've ever seen. Oh, I wonder what happened. I mean, he started yeah, going over just, the yeah, tip of went, his skis. He was going, Ugh. yeah, no, I'm out of that sport, wow. bro. One, even just seeing that, I'm like, yeah. nah. I'm a kid, like, mm, 
I, mean, I think I'll race bikes. Yeah, to survive that. And I, to think I'll, I think I'll fight MMA instead. Yeah. Dude. But it's not like... Well, good for him, man. Yeah. He's, and he's, he's a factor guy. in this race, so... Thanks Tough to our guy. Slovenian fan. Yeah. Uh, let's see. One more. Yeah, one more question. Right. So this is for either Lance or George or both of you if you want. So after a mountain summit finish, how do riders get back down the mountain? How long does this take? Uh, are the riders waiting out uh, for fans in their team buses or heading back down? Do teams have a strategy to get the riders back down the mountain after a summit finish? That's from Simon in Toronto. Logistically, unbelievably complicated. I mean, and, and, and certain teams... Figure it out better. The podium guys, uh, stage winner, they have access to the Tour de France helicopters that can get them back down. Um, uh, but there, there's a there's a real science to this. And, you know, most teams, if it's an uphill finish, they'll keep the bulk of their staff at the bottom, uh, the team bus at the bottom. They'll have maybe one or two soigneurs at the top. So the guys cross the finish line. They'll hand them a jacket, hand them a, a hat uh, and a towel, and then they'll just turn around and ride down. If you remember last year. Let's not forget the pink whistle. <laughs> right. Uh, Blowing the whistle. From Alberto Contador. I mean, this is just, just takes the cake. So he's, you know, but riders have to, the trick is, and I, I agree with this. I mean, I would never have a pink whistle, but as you're coming down, <laughs> the fans are walking down. Yeah. So they're not expecting you to go flying by them behind right. them. And so you got to yell, hey, on your right, on your left, uh, you know, whatever. Or you could have a pink whistle. We'll just let them know AC's coming. You've got an entire mountaintop of drunks. Yeah, facing yeah. the Walking, other direction. Facing the other way. It's it's one of the most dangerous parts of the Tour de France. <laughs> it is. I'm, it I'm, is I can't you know. believe I never crashed going down that, but it's super scary. Wow. And the riders are. It's not like the riders are trying to go slow because they want to get to the bus they and get, get their over. recovery food and get the hell out of there into the hotel. So I mean, in the old days, we'd have risks. to sit in traffic. You yeah. just get in the cars and you just just slowly make your way down oh the mountain. It's just, it was. The, the guys have, and I, I think I don't know if that's allowed, but I think some of these teams are actually to the point of having. You know, chartering their own heli for those stages just so they can get guys off just so they can start recovering mm -hmm. faster yeah and why wouldn't you the yeah. the biggest annual sporting event in the world yeah i mean you don't think they have helis at f1 right yeah, yeah. helis at all these other big events of course well i don't know i don't know if it's allowed to be honest with you because of uh i mean when sky tried to have their own bus so richie pork can sleep in it they uci denied it they said you had to sleep in a hotel so <laughs> at, the hotel, at the assigned hotel which we got into hotel. last year mm -hmm. so i would I would suspect it's because the helicopter would be such a huge expense that 90% of the teams could not afford that they would not allow that. We first started bringing a chef to the tour, and, and people just they thought we were just snotty, just, just the, the biggest snobs ever. But it, the, it makes sense to have control of your intake. Now, your now every team has their own, not only do they have chefs, they have their own kitchen truck. Yeah. They don't even with, cook with in the, the hotel yeah, room. The dining room. Wow. Yeah. All right. Hey, happy hour tonight. That's for right. Members. Happy, that's right. Happy hour for members. If Come you, on. If you go to we do team and you want to sign up, you can watch all the previous episodes, including the last happy hour with George, which is a lot of fun. Uh, that'll be. Are we doing shoot for five o'clock? We're shooting for time? five mountain, four Pacific, special, seven special Eastern. Special guests and special guests. We the last one, Anna Hansen, my better half, made an appearance, and and George's wife landed last night. Um, for all you French fans, uh, so they're gonna. Anna said, we're only coming for 10 minutes. We'll see how that ten, goes. Yeah, she says, only 10 <laughs> minutes. I said, okay, honey. Whatever. So they'll be here with us. You can send your questions uh, to that through the, the, the membership live. Right. We, we take those questions yep. in real time. It's a Got lot it. of fun. So cool. we do dot team if you want to sign up uh, to become a member. Okay. Thanks, y'all.